Welcome back. Alex Bailey here. A great review for you today and unboxing. These are the Astro City Mini Cabs. These were announced back in June over the summer that they were going to be made as a commemoration, of course, of Sega's large arcade history. Now, originally the Astro, Mini, Astro City came out in 1993 over in Japan using the JAMA boards, which is basically where Virtual Fighter 1 started and many other games, uh, Columns 2, uh, nothing like Sonic or anything you'd expect out of this. These are based on arcade games that came out over in Japan on Sega. And fortunately, this wasn't announced in America. It was only orderable from Japan, as you can tell by all the Japanese on these boxes. But these boxes are awesome. This brings me back to the 90s arcades, the, the coloring. Um, so I'm going to dive into all that. But I mean, just, just looking at the back of the box saying, uh, I'm definitely going to keep this box. I've already opened this. Uh, I wanted to check it out. I was excited about it. But also ordered the controller that plugs into this. Also the fight stick, which I'll, I'll dive in deeper in another video, uh, but I want to show you guys all this. It finally came out. Uh, if you want to know, uh, Amazon Japan actually ships to America now. It's usually about $15, $20 an order, depending what you're ordering, but it was supposed to come after Christmas and I saw that shipping confirmation from DHL Express uh, you know, like four days ago. It was supposed to come next week, and then I got it like within two days later. So very impressed with the turnaround time as soon as they released over in Japan. But this comes with 36 different games. Um, I'll run the list through. I'll link you the list. And I'll all side it below. But yeah, so let's get to unboxing. But, you know, as you may or may not know, I've been to Japan a couple times. I love arcade culture. I've been building a little mini arcade area with the New Wave Toys replicas. Now this, the Neo Geo. So I'll be comparing this size-wise to show you everything else about it. But for now, please enjoy this uh, review video on the Astro City Mini Cab. So starting with the unboxing of the Astro City Mini Cab itself. Uh, just open that. Simple boxing. Um, yeah, so in here, you're gonna have, comes with an HDMI, so this does actually do HDMI out, which I will test for you guys in a moment. Uh, so, HDMI looks like a six footer right there, which is pretty cool. If you wanna connect it to your TV, a little stuffing for that. You've got your USB, so people were hoping this would be battery powered, like the Wave, new Wave Toys uh, arcade replicas, but unfortunately it's not. So you do need to have it powered via micro USB, um, which is weird, this is just now coming out the Neo Geo Minis that came out over two years ago uh, had USB-C to set them up and charge. But So your two cables there, and then, oh, first, obviously the wording in Japanese, so I'll never be able to understand this, but still pretty awesome. Looks like warranty information, it explains all the buttons, actually has a list of games, so a little instruction booklet on everything, but should be pretty simple enough to learn how to turn this thing on and enjoy. And then, of course, the... Astro City itself. Take that out. Wrapping. There it is. Actually feels little, not heavy by any means. It's very light, but um, it feels not too light. Like it feels perfect. So awesome. Yeah, on my desk, I have to actually forcefully push it around. Let's open up the controller as well. This was 30 or $40, uh, the controller separately, and I ordered them all together. Then this is about 120 US dollars. The flight stick was also about 120 or 130. So we'll dive into that stick in a minute because everyone's actually excited about this thing right here. This is, this is the big boy, hoping it'll work on PC or be moddable so you can play it on other systems. So we'll get to that in a moment. But pretty standard stuff in here. You've got the controller with the wire. Oh my God, Sega, come on guys. There we go. Ooh, I like that. We'll dive into that up close in a moment. Has these two little ridges here, so you can kind of hold it in your hand like that, so it's not flat on the back, which is cool. Credit, start, it is an arcade machine, so everything's based like on arcade tokens. There's no like start options or anything like that. It's just jump right in, insert your coins and play. Six button setup. I can imagine people trying to use this. D-pad. It's the, uh, you know, not separated buttons or anything, but we'll get into that in a moment. So there's that. There's that. And then the fight stick, which I already took out. Also was too excited, but... Uh, and it was just basically, it was wrapped in plastic, and then it had the two little ridges that stuffed the box. But 
This thing is beautiful. I know you guys watched uh, the 8-Bit Dough review. By the way, I learned that it's 8-Bit Dough, not 8-Bit Do. Uh, but this is just as heavy, if not a little bit heavier. My biggest complaint, and we'll dive into it, is the Torx screws just to remove the vinyl up top and then put in your own art if you'd like. So those T10 Torx screws right there. But on the back, small Phillips head. So thank you for that, because gosh, taking apart that 8-Bit Dough took forever. So. So, the reason we're all here is the Astro City Mini Cab itself. I haven't plugged it in yet, but I just wanted to show you. Obviously the stick, this actually feels really good. The Neo Geo, I'll compare in a moment, is, you know, it was really loose, but this is clicky. The buttons feel good. Obviously these are tiny buttons. I don't believe they're Sama buttons, but it gets the job done for a mini arcade cam. You're not gonna be seeing anybody going out and doing pros, but got your six button layout here. It'll probably be ABC for most of the arcade games. Uh, but we'll go through those menus in a moment. And then obviously a coin button and then a start button uh, to start your player one. And on the back, show you the sides, very well constructed. There's a back panel here, this does not open, so that's just there for show, but you've got your off on power button right there, HDMI out to go to TVs, a one player USB, a two player USB, I'm assuming you can have one player play on that and the other one, uh, but this would be good for HDMI out. Headphone jack, and then again, micro USB for DC power. So there's that. And then well, let me show you the controller real quick up close. So your D-pad, the circular D-pad right here, start, select, uh, credit, start, and then six button layout, A, B, C, D, E, F. And then again, these ridges are really cool to kind of hold on to. So um, very light USB. Good size cable. I remember when like the micro NESs and Super Nintendos were coming out, uh, the minis, they just, the, the distance on the cords was really horrible. So, and then obviously the fight stick again, super impressive the quality of this. Uh, excited to give it a shot. I tried it on Tekken last night. It kind of worked. You had to do some button configuration. Uh, it was showing the inputs. So we'll see what people do modding this if you are interested. And again, this is about a $130 stick. Obviously, there's much better options out there that you can get, you know, Quambas or Vitrixes and all that. More expensive, uh, but for the nostalgia feel, they did a damn good job on this. This is definitely arcade quality. So there's that. Let's boot it up. So plugged in. Going to turn it on. Back switch right here. Just on. No sounds yet. Ooh. Ooh. A lot of people don't like to take these off, but oh, that's so satisfying right there. I don't mind that. Nice quality screen right there. Sounds great. The arcade system. Uh, and then I'll hook this up to an HDMI as well so you can see it on the big screen in a moment. But very cool. 36 different games are actually numbered on the sides. Fortunately, everything's in English right here, so. But what's cool is if you go left or right, it shows you a couple more pictures of the said games. Don't think you can log in, yep. So we'll go back for a second, but. So I'm going through it, and then I noticed some games, when you go, a BGM will pop up, so it'll actually let you play. The BGM, the original Virtual Fighter song you would hear in the arcades, that's so awesome, so. But just now getting this menu, this actually might be my favorite menu in terms of uh, the effort that they put into it. So changing the screen to see what you're looking into. Now for selection of games, I'm gonna be up front. N not a lot of stuff people remember or recognize. Virtual Fighter obviously is the big title on this, but Golden Axe, they had a sequel that never really released, uh, I believe into the American arcades, Revenge of the Death Adder, which looks great. Uh, I played all of that. Arabian Fight was another cool fighting game. So to go through this and then let's break down the settings menu for you. Uh, settings right here, the coin button, obviously your please read, health precautions, you know, take breaks, language settings, you can obviously change your languages here, stick to English, copyright information, ooh, that's a lot of licensing. And that's always, you know, what decides what games get on these things is licensing they can do. Now, the one thing I'm noticing, volume, there's no actual physical volume knobs anywhere on this thing, so that kind of sucks, but you can go in here. Brightness, so that was all the way up. Oh my gosh, just gonna start that music over. All right, I'm gonna have nightmares already. Go back to settings, let's go brightness, hit okay. So not bad. 
Obviously, you want to keep it fully bright. You know, you're not going to be worrying about waking anybody up on a tiny, tiny arcade machine. So go with that, and then volume. It's all the way up right now. So you have to go into the menu, and I realize that you cannot do this while you're in game. So whatever you set up, make sure you're sticking to it. So you can actually mute it all the way, go all the way up. For the purpose of this video, let's stick to medium for now. Screen settings, default or analog. So you can actually add the scan lines, which is cool. So just two simple options. Personally, I don't need to be that nostalgic. I want the games to kind of look good because I'm so used to this generation. But wallpaper settings is cool. You can do empty. You can do a little uh, kind of cyber blue thing. And then the Astro City one. Definitely going to be my personal favorite. But let's boot up a game. And then let's th hook this up to a HDMI out, see how it goes. But let's, let's obviously boot up Virtual Fighter, see how that runs. Wonder Boy is a good one. No Sonic, like no version of a, like a Sonic arcade game, which is fine, but Cyber. So a couple side scrollers as well. These aren't in alphabetical order. It doesn't look like you can change uh, the order of the games and stuff, but here we go. Virtual Fighter was number 33, so that's random. This is really cool. You boot up the game. You can actually set up three save states. Now, these are arcade machines that didn't have save states, but for the purpose of, you know, uh, current things with all the other mini cabs and stuff, they actually include save states so you can start, reset, all that stuff, and pick up where you left off. But this is cool. It gives you three out of the gate. And then the buttons. And a little info. World's first 3D fighting game. Revive the battle with polygon rendered characters. Start. Very cool, you gotta insert a coin. Oh, that sound. And I do like these side comms, that's actually pretty nifty. Akira, now I actually used to play a bit of Virtual Fighter in the arcades when it first came out. I wasn't really blown away with 3D Fighters until the Tekken series came out, but I like the dirty old man Lao. Where are you? There we go, I can still do the sweep, and then as you all may remember, hold up, this is my favorite. Oh! Stomp to death. Now, to go back, you have to hit select start at the same time. So we're back, just want to show you, I plugged this into the two player port on the back. So just to show you, if you get a second controller, you get the arcade stick, you'll be able to play two players with people. And you can actually also select with the second player. And believe it or not, it'll actually start you off as the second player, which is pretty cool if you're plugged into the second player port on the back. So second player, then you want to play somebody on this one, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, Virtual Fighter, you know, world's first 3D fighting game. I remember this one. Um, I didn't really get into 3D fighters until Tekken, so. But this was still great. People loved it. It was a change of pace from, you know, Street Fighter and all the other games. So, but yeah, so using the controller is great. Playing off of this is great so far. Let's plug it into HDMI out and see how it looks on the big screen for you. So we're back. So the moment I plugged in the HDMI into the monitor, it just instantly... Disconnected off this and sent it right in, and so now I'm controlling the fight stick. So yeah, it actually is outputting pretty good. I'm not sure the resolution or anything, but it's pretty much upscaling it to look awesome. So let's boot up another game, Space Harrier. Actually, is always a classic, so let's try that out for you. But so far, I'm impressed. Like I said, the menu system is amazing. They did a really good job. Uh, Space Harrier is actually one of my favorite original old school arcade games. Plug that in. I don't believe this has a second player. Okay, so that's cool. So if it's not a two-player game, you can't do anything with the controller plugged in, so it's not letting me add coins or anything. So that automatically just does that for you. Actually, so you can actually press start. Okay, so just start actually takes you back to the main menu. So yeah, this game was just, it looks so cool. It was like a kind of a 3D version of it. Controls are inverted. Oh, God. That's wild, but... This game's just a lot of fun to shoot shit around, so... Oh, already died. I'm horrible. It's hard to look at an angle, so... Soon I'll, I'll invest in getting these uh, direct-to-capture for you guys to see, but you can get an idea of the quality. So, all right, so mid-game you can't start, so you do have to hit both buttons, uh, coin and start. Back to main menu. So, yeah, I, I think this... It's fun. Uh, me personally, the selection of games aren't games that like I'm like, oh, I gotta get into this. Puyo Puyo is actually a huge classic. We posted at Sio Taco before, uh, and they just came out with a new one that nobody really talked about after it came out. So, but bless Sega for bringing that back. Uh, super popular game. Golden Axe again. This is probably one of the new games that people are gonna jump to right away. So let's boot that one up. 
beat them up. I believe this uh, in the arcades, the original Golden Axes were three player, but let's do that. Let's see if this will do that. Yep, two player game. Very cool. You got a female Minotaur right here. That's pretty badass. And that guy can't pick the same character, so. Yeah, this game, nobody really got a chance to play it, so it's awesome that they're adding something uh, uh, technically new and fresh for you to check out. Obviously, everything's going to be in Japanese, but, you know, besides reading the instructions and everything, once you get it, everything's in English. You can manage and do all that. Special powers. Oh, my God, it has a dash run. I love that. I hate I hate any side scrollers like streets, the original Streets of Rage where you have to use kid or skate to freaking skate by and actually start running, so... But very cool. So yeah, this is it. He's got the dwarf on his back. This game actually looks fun. I'm actually going to probably play through this with a buddy and uh, enjoy it. But yeah, so that's hooked up to HDMI out. We can back out again. Again, I, I, I think it's a great system. The build quality is awesome. Let me do a quick comparison for you with the Neo Geo Mini. i uh, just show you the scale of it. But otherwise, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. I will dive into the stick more. Please let me know in the comments what you'd like to see when I do open up this stick for you. Uh, and any other questions about this, leave it down in the comments. Again, hope you guys are having great holidays. Christmas is coming up. I hope you get everything you hope for. Uh, if you couldn't get a PS5 or Xbox Series X, don't worry. Play Cyberpunk on PC. You'll be much better off. But Astro City, great for nostalgia. Great build quality. The game selection, again, there's not a lot of great different games. I think the Neo Geo Mini uh, trumps that in terms of just more games that I personally would want to play. But I think it's just great that... The, these game, these mini consoles are kind of taking over now. Ho now our hopes and dreams are hoping for like a mini Sega Dreamcast and such. But uh, in terms of uh, up there, these are great. You can build your own little mini arcade. I actually am waiting on a couple more pieces for that to show you a cool little video of that coming up. But Astro City, you can actually set up an Amazon Japan account if you're in America. I'm not sure about other countries, but super easy. And then as soon as you're in it, you can actually set a language to English. So very dangerous for me because now I'm like buying up stuff from Japan and paying a little bit more just to get it over here. But very cool that they're starting to do that, that we don't have to deal with like a Play Asia or these other people, these huge import fees and stuff. So Amazon taking over the world. What do you expect? So yeah, hope you enjoyed this video, guys. And then quick comparison and I'll see you around. So yeah, in terms of collection of games, uh, the clear winners here on this one. Um, box designs, obviously, they've made many different boxes for this, but in terms of just build quality, you know, this feels a little bit more plasticky, flimsy. This also has HDMI out though, but it uses actually micro USD uh, HDMI. I'm sorry. So uh, micro HDMI out. This is regular standard HDMI. So in terms of which one's better. You know, just completely different games, different lore from the history of arcade games and stuff. But again, this has more games I would like to play. However, screen-wise, the screen on the Astro City is, is gorgeous by comparison. So not even a uh, a fair comparison there. This is much smaller, much smaller resolution and stuff. So, But this has Metal Slug games. It has more games I would be interested in playing with friends and family and stuff. So the only thing is I wish these would have a volume knob. If you look over here... The Street Fighter cab that I have over here actually has one on the top, which is pretty cool. So I like that. Now, this is obviously just a singular game, but this is from a different company that's been picking up stuff. Metal Slug here. And you can get controllers and stuff. So there we go. Start button. So yeah. But in terms of size, Astro City, clear winner on that one. So back ports and stuff. Everything's on the back here. You can plug the controllers on the sides, headphone jack. Power buttons right there. So that actually is kind of dangerous. If you like pick it up, you might actually accidentally turn it off and then you have that. So, but again, to compare, I'll go over a, a bigger video. I actually have another arcade machine from them to open up soon. So, but I hope you guys enjoyed this again and uh, thank you so much and happy holidays.